Bear, Leak Project. How the heck are you? I've had multiple requests lately to talk about my experiences with the 72 Lesser Keys of Solomon. Now, this was back in about the 2008 time frame when I actually picked up a used copy of the 72 Lesser Keys of Solomon. And it was actually from eBay. I picked it up off of eBay, and I thought I got a good deal on it. But one thing that was interesting is when I actually purchased the book and I got it in my hands, I could tell that it had a real like dense energy to it. And when I opened up the book, the very front page looked like it had a watermark or something on it, but the watermark looked like the outline of your typical demon with horns. It was just spooky. Now, my roommate at the time had no idea I had purchased the book. I had the book for several weeks, and I finally just got rid of it because it was so intense. I mean, just the energy was very dense and parasitic and almost like vampiric. It was it was very, very frightening. So I got rid of the book, and I since then purchased multiple books that actually talk about the Goetia and the Lesser Keys of Solomon. So I didn't realize at the time that it wasn't a good idea to pick up a used Goetia. Because think about it, if you pick up a used Goetia and somebody purchased that book to do their bidding, which might be sinister or dark, well, when they pass that book on, the energies are going to go with it. And I didn't even think about it at the time. I mean, I was just a, a novice. I was literally a rookie, and I was I was playing with fire way too early. But I was doing it in research, and I was really just wanting to find the truth because I had been, how do I put it? There had been so many different things that had presented themselves to me outside of the physical parameters that I was just, hungry for knowledge. And that's and somebody said, you know, there's a book called The 72 Lesser Keys of Solomon that you can actually see how Solomon summoned up specific entities to do particular works. And I thought to myself, wow, that's fascinating. So I purchased the book more on a study aspect. And by having the book at the same time, I realized that not a good idea to pick up a used Goetia. What I want to talk to you guys about now, also on top of that, is Sidzil creation. What are Sidzils? What are these symbols of power? Why do so many corporations, virtually every corporation that I've seen, has some type of Sidzil or symbol that represents their particular archetype the way that they want them to? Now, most banks and financial institutions use some type of sun symbol in their Sidzil and even if you look at Starbucks with the, the god Isis, it's fascinating if you really get deep into the symbolic aspect of these symbols that go all the way back into antiquity. Very powerful, especially depending on what kind of energy you project and put into them. You can put good or bad energy into these symbols, and other people can as well. So... If you're picking up on something, let's say you pick up a, a specific symbol that resonates with you. Well, hey, you know, I mean, you can put good energy into that and you can get what you want with it. Now, if you look at specific symbols as something dark or negative, hey, stay away from it. Absolutely, stay away from it. But I wanted to show you guys how to actually make your own Sidzil, how to create your own symbols of power, and hopefully manifest what you want in a positive fashion, in a faster fashion. It's almost like that. Let me put it to you this way. <clears throat> and people have known about this for thousands of years, especially in many of the, the mystery schools. I'm going to share a little secret with you that was passed on to me. If you want to manifest something and you want to do it quicker and you want to use tools to your advantage, well, one of the things you can do is, is mental exercises. You can do imagination exercises where you literally image what you want in your mind. You can meditate about it when you're going to sleep, as you're going to sleep, and you do your best to think about nothing but what you want it to manifest. You smell it, you taste it, you touch it, you feel it, you hear it, you see it, all the senses. You imagine yourself there, you imagine what it's like, and then you look at it in pretext 
Other things you can do are create certain symbols and do mantras. Now, what I did was I actually made something for today's show, and I'm going to show you how to make a sizzle. It's pretty cool. It's pretty easy, and it's it's nothing woo woo. You're not you're not summoning up any evil spirits or anything like that. This is from you. This is manifesting your own reality based upon your own willpower and what's in your mind and what you're projecting. It's all a vibration, ladies and gentlemen. So what I did was I wrote down on this piece of paper, leak project. Okay, here we go. Leak project surpasses 1 million subscribers within the next 42 months. And then I wrote that out. And then what you do is you get rid of all the double letters and you get rid of all the vowels. And then whatever letters you have left, you can see those are the letters that I have left right there. L key, P R J C T S N M F Y W. Got rid of the vowels, got rid of all the doubles. And then I created a specific symbol with those letters. And that's the symbol that I created with those letters. That's the sidzil that I created. Now, another key factor to creating reality with symbols and sigils. And, and guys, don't get all weird. I mean, it's like, oh, you know, I want to make a spaceship that takes me to Zoltar, and I want a billion dollars, and I'm just going to write some letters up. And, oh, there it is. I can already see the comments and the trolls. I mean, maybe that can be done. I'm not going there. These are things that you really want that you can see with your own eyes, that you can envision, and you put it on paper, and it's just like writing goals. That's all that it's doing. It's just like writing goals. And when you learn about the subconscious, oftentimes the subconscious mind is more powerful than the conscious mind. And your conscious mind oftentimes puts barriers in place, preventing you from achieving your goals. So when you put together a sigil like this, one thing I would recommend doing if you're planning on doing this is put together a whole bunch of them. Make 10, 15, 20 of them. And then forget what all of them mean. Do your best to literally consciously forget what every single one of those symbols, sigils represent. Now, if you can forget what they mean, you will have a better chance of creating that reality, creating that destiny. Because your conscious mind forgets, it eliminates the barrier there of creating that. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Now, one of the things that I, I totally forgot about, so, hey, maybe, you know, I don't even remember what this specific sigil represents. And you can barely see it because it's upside down. And what I did was I put it under this, this Oregon pyramid like, geez, seven years ago at least? I mean, long time ago. Seven, eight years ago, I put this thing under this pyramid and just forgot about it. Now it's stuck to the bottom of this. And I don't remember what it, what it means. So, you know, it's, it's emitting that energy through the pyramid power. People say it's all in your imagination. Your imagination is so powerful. It is extremely powerful. As a matter of fact, if you have a magnificent imagination, the possibilities are near endless. One of the things that Franz Barden taught me, one of the most incredible people that ever walked the face of the earth, I'm sure most of you haven't heard of him, Franz Barden. He's not with us anymore physically. Franz Barden wrote a book called Initiation into Hermetics where he teaches you practical applications to expand your mind, expand your consciousness, improve your spirit, improve your soul, even your physical being. It's incredible. I mean, absolutely incredible. If you can master a dozen of the exercises in his one book, Initiation in Hermetics, you are literally a, mag a magi. You are a mage. You are a Jedi. You are a badass. You are awesome. Pardon my language. The imagination helps you achieve those specific goals. For example, I'll give you another little gem here if you want to expand your mind. If not, I would recommend turning off this podcast right now. First of all, you have to learn how to listen to your thoughts. So let's say you spend 10 minutes a day focusing on nothing but what's going through your head. Then you can start to understand who you are, what you are, and what's going through your mind. So that is going to resonate with you and help you understand what makes you tick, why you're stressed sometimes, why you get excited sometimes, what bothers you, what doesn't, etc. Once you realize that, then you can break that down into focusing on one specific topic 
or one specific word and push everything out. So once you learn how to listen to your thoughts for 10 minutes straight, literally do nothing else but listen to your thoughts for 10 minutes straight, then move to the next level. Then focus on one thought. If you can focus on one thought, once you learn how to do that for 10 minutes, then you go to the next level. And then you learn how to think about nothing. Try thinking about nothing for 10 seconds. I'll bet you can't do it. Even if you've been meditating for years, it is difficult to think about nothing. I mean, you're literally letting yourself go. What does that mean? Nothing's got to be something, right? Exactly. So try doing that. I shouldn't even say try. There is no try and do. Get rid of the word try out of your vocabulary if you want to achieve something. Do not think. Let it go. Be nothing for 10 minutes. If you can do that, then you can move to the next level. If you can achieve that of 10 minutes of nothingness, the opportunities with your mind over matter are absolutely incredible. Nothing short of extraordinary. Seriously, Jedi status. You don't want to do bad things anymore. You want to become a premium member at leakproject.com. You want to become a premium member at leakproject.com. <laughs> Just joking. But you do want to become a premium member at leakproject.com, don't you? Yes. So... This was, I think this is basically the symbol that I put together many years ago. I couldn't put it together perfectly because I didn't get a good enough view for it. But I think this is what it was. And I don't remember what all the letters are that put this together. It was something pretty cool, though. I know that. And maybe it's already manifested itself because I literally consciously don't remember what that sigil represents. So... Another thing that I wanted to do with you guys is I wanted to share with you, this is some more gemlicious information. This is actually, I, I purchased this new, and this is the, the clavis or key to the magic of Solomon, and it's from an original talismanic grimoire in full color, so by Frederick Hockley and Ebenezer Sibley. This is, this is intense. I mean, it's, as a matter of fact... Just give you an example here. If you read through this, you can see that it's in cursive. I mean, so this this isn't just your typical printed edition, mass printed edition book. Well, what what I want to do since it's Saturday today, and Saturday is is um, governed by the planet Saturn in this specific solar system, and we've been talking about the cult of Saturn a lot, and. Kronos is the, the uh, Greek god that represents Saturn, which is pretty frightening because you can see drawings, paintings of Kronos eating his child to stay alive. Yet, let's, let's look at the bright side of Saturday. So there's all, <laughs> let's look at the, uh, the bright side of Saturn, if there, there is any. You ever wonder what those rings actually represent? I mean, are those in representation of some type of imprisonment, some type of frequency, harmonics, antenna that affects the entire solar system? Well, here is the, uh, the talisman to find a hidden treasure made on Saturday under Saturn. And then the one on the other side is the seal of the familiar spirit of Saturn, Eridor, made on Saturday under Saturn. Pretty wild, right? So essentially, uh, now you guys know how to make your own power symbol, your own sidzil, for all sorts of amazing opportunities. And once again, it was a drawing. It wasn't anything demonic. I wasn't invoking any spirits there. Now, if you get into the 72 Lesser Keys of Solomon, and you draw out the sidzils and you call upon the names of the sidzils, well, then you are invoking a, some people feel it's just a representation of themselves, a, a part of themselves that is an archetype that's drawn out that goes back since the beginning of time. Some people feel that these entities have been around before the beginning of time, that they've been around before light, before man. doesn't mean before God, the divine providence, the creation of all. It's fascinating indeed, folks. I mean, we live in incredible times with all the information we have access to. What do we want to take advantage of for the right things? What do we want to help with? What do we want to do to be the change that we want to see? What are you doing to be the change that you want to see? Question everything, leakproject.com.
Bear Leak Project, how the heck are you? I've had multiple requests lately to talk about my experiences with the 72 Lesser Keys of Solomon. Now, this was back in about the 2008 time frame when I actually picked up a UN, purchased multiple books that actually talk about the Goetia and the Lesser Keys of Solomon. So, I didn't realize at the time that it wasn't a good idea to pick up a used Goetia. Because think about it. If you pick up a used Goetia and somebody purchased that book to do their bidding, which might be sinister or dark, well, when they pass that book on, the energies are going to go with it. And I didn't even think used copy of the 72 Lesser Keys of Solomon. And it was actually from eBay. I picked it up off of eBay, and I thought I got a good deal on it. But one thing that was interesting is when I actually purchased the book and I got it in my hands, I could tell that it had a real like dense energy to it. And when I opened up the book, the very front page looked like it had a watermark or something on it. But the watermark looked like the outline of your typical demon with horns. It was just spooky. Now, my roommate at the time had no idea I had purchased the book. I had the book for several weeks, and I finally just got rid of it because it was so intense. I mean, just the energy was very dense and parasitic and almost like vampiric. It was, it was very, very frightening. So I got rid of the book, and I sensed that about it at the time. I mean, I was just a, a novice. I was literally a rookie, and I was... I was playing with fire way too early, but I was doing it in research, and I was really just wanting to find the truth because I had been, how do I put it, there had been so many different things that had presented themselves to me outside of the physical parameters that I was just hungry for knowledge, and that's, and somebody said, you know, there's a book called The 72 Lesser 